Philosophers have long puzzled over this mm. traction question. One of the earliest theories mm. was um, the, the Cupid theory. Essentially, Cupid mm. would float about uh, shooting his arrows at random people, and if you happened to be struck at one of by one of Cupid's arrows, you would instantly fall in love with the first object or person that you saw. And there were lots of stories in the ancient Greek texts about people falling in love with statues and animals, for example. Um, by, the, by the 16th and 17th century, the, the idea had shifted slightly um, based on developments in optical theory. The idea here was that light would speed from one person into your eyes and down into your heart, and your beating heart would make a decision about whether or not you found the person attractive. By the 19th century, that had changed slightly. The heart was replaced by the brain, so light would still, still speed from one person down, into your, down through your eyes and up to your brain and your brain would make the final decision about whether or not you found that person attractive. Over the years, there have been lots of different theories about attraction, and by the 20th century, scientists have begun, begun to get interested in what, why we find people attractive and how we explain the process of attraction. What we now know is that there are four essential ingredients for a, a relationship formation. Uh, the first of these is geography. Essentially, we tend to form relationships with people who are relatively nearby. Uh, because it costs less time and money to form relationships with those people, but also because people who are nearby tend to be more familiar to us. Uh, the second key ingredient is physical appearance. We tend to find and want to form relationships with people who are physically attractive, uh, but beyond physical appearance alone, having a nice personality, being nice and warm and, and having a good sense of humour and loyal are all key ingredients as well. Uh, the next key ingredient is reciprocity. Uh, we tend to form relationships and, and, and form better relationships with people who reciprocate uh, essentially intimacy, but also information, love, anything that you can exchange, um, those relationships tend to do better. And the final ingredient is similarity. Uh, so we tend to find and form relationships with people who are more similar to us rather than dissimilar. So opposites almost never, never attract. Whereas people who are more similar in terms of their values, their demographics tend to form better relationships. So body size ideals haven't always remained constant. Um, the, the kind of the, the best theory to explain how body size ideals have changed is called the resource security theory. The resource security theory essentially predicts that we find attractive people who have resources. Now one, one idea here is that people who have resources tend to put on more body fat essentially because they have more access to food. So if you're living in a culture or a time during which um, resources would have been scarce, you're t you, tend to be, you tend to be more likely to idealize someone who is heavier. So for example, in the 18th century, the ideal body size tended to be heavier than it is now, but also now in, in contemporary societies, um, societies that lack resources, particularly rural societies, tend to idealise a heavier body size compared to urban societies. We don't always make good relationship decisions and, and one reason why we don't always make good relationship decisions is essentially because we carry a lot of emotional baggage with us, past relationships, but also relationships with our families and our parents all influence who we find attractive and, and, and whether or not we try and have a relationship with them. But sometimes that can not always be a good thing. Uh, another reason is because we carry lots of, of information about what is the ideal relationship just from living in a society that constantly tells us what an ideal relationship is. And often we, we make these decisions when we're stressed in the early part of a relationship, particularly if you're sitting at home waiting for a text from someone and it's not coming through, you get stressed and when you're stressed you make bad decisions. So a lot of the time we, we don't always make informed good decisions about who is attractive or who would make a good partner for us.